Before the break, Joe Pippen was trying to help me and my family hold on to my uh, resources and my funds because when I, if I had a, an accident or something was to happen to me, who knows what would happen to my house and my home and my, all the different things I've collected over my life. I've got to take an active role in protecting those assets so that we brought Joe on to help explain those kind of things. Before the, before the break, he had gone, gone through a scenario where I was deceased and had left my sister in charge of what, uh, my assets there, and she was trying to uh, litigate through all the different things that, that go on. He mentioned probate and some of the things that happened with that. I had to ask Joe about folks that didn't do, weren't good stewards with their money. For instance, I have outstanding fees and different uh, auto debits that are going into all my accounts. If I was to pass away and my sister was unaware of all the financial activity I was involved in, it's quite possible that I could keep accruing fees and fines even Mm post-mortem. Well, your sister, um, I would tell her if I was representing her, get your mail directed to her. Right. So you change the mailing address. You go through all of her financial papers and determine what the debts are if you can. I mean, you do your best. Mm-hmm. You get the mail. You see credit card bills and things like that. You go through your important papers if you've signed a loan or a note or a mortgage or something, you know, and there's a debt. Oh, there's Her job is to find all those things. Uh, on the same level, though, she we put a, no, a notice in the newspaper. If it's probate, um, creditors have a time limit to file a claim against the estate. If it's a trust, they have a time limit to file claims against the estate. So you look at your past tax returns, see what your interest deductions are, things like that. Mm-hmm. You, try, you try hard to figure out everything you have or you are involved in and just do the best you can, basically. I mean, you, you usually it's, most of the time it works out fine. Sure. I just got the feeling, that because I'm suspicious of a lot of these folks that are uh, trying to collect debts that don't exist from me, <laughs> that they would continue to harass her in, in my, you know, as, as a result of her taking over from my well, assets. Well, our common strategy is when people file uh, a claims, if you have any doubt at all, just object to the claim and make them prove it. Explain that a little bit, Joe. All right. In, in probate, uh, you put a notice in the newspaper where creditors can file a claim against the estate if okay. the money's owed. Uh, but on the other hand, representing your sister, if she had any doubt at all, this doesn't look like a legit, you know, who's this guy, Brandon Rimes, that he mm-hmm. says you owe him, you know, $10,000. $10, right. So you object to it. Right. And make Brandon prove it. I see. So he has to prove you owe the money. He has to come up with a promissory note, maybe a schedule of payments or something like that. And the, and the court determines the validity of those documents. Yeah. And if you, if you come to an impasse, you know, they, they can take it to court. Okay. But you ask the probate judge, you object to it, and ask the probate judge to dismiss it unless they provide uh, evidence to the court. Now, we have all have uh, heard scenarios, whether they're from Hollywood or other places, where somebody passes away and there's the family starts fighting. They, they're going to fight about who he really told me I get it and you told him I got it. Uh, a lot of times they're producing uh, documents that counter contradict one another. Uh, mm-hmm. And it becomes quite a mess with each each family member having their own attorney, and, and they kind of get into the squabble. Uh, can you talk a little about how that generally turns to uh, hurt the, the entire value of the estate, right? Because someone's going to pay all those legal fees. As they quarrel about this, the, the estate is actually reducing in value, is it not? Well, the last will is the last will if there's a will. So if there was a valid will that's not contested for undue influence or incompetence, that would be the last will. Other sta- uh, verbal statements are not valid. You could even make a vi- you could you could make a video will, mm. and that's not valid. Really, it has to be in writing. So, have you seen that play out where someone yeah, came well, in? Yeah, well, some people come in and want to do a, do a, a video will to support their last will or trust, and a lot of times, you know, you might tell them no, let's not do a video will because you know the video will might prove. It might be enough in the video will with you stumbling around with mm. words. I mean, I don't say it quite like this, but. Right. You know, you you don't make a good video presence. You're not convincing. You you wander a little bit in your thoughts. You know, there might be enough in a video will to make it even easier to challenge. Wow, I never thought of that. Uh, so I really don't like video wills. If a person has a well drafted out script and they're pretty vocal and coherent, and uh, you know, can talk with them just like you and I are talking, well, that's fine. Okay. But if an, uh, an elderly person kind of stumbles around a little bit and maybe they stop and hesitate and you, you wonder what they're going to say, you know, you never know. So I usually don't like even to do a video will. Mm-hmm. I've seen some movies where there have been some great video wills, but they don't work in real life a lot of times, <laughs> you know. So I just think uh, 
I think of the scenario where you have your everything in place, you feel good about your documents and everything, but then there's a change you want to make. There's a new birth, a new grandchild, there's a new something, a, a particular piece of art or something that you want to just give to this mm -hmm. person. Do you have to tear up all the, in other words, to make an amendment, does that, uh, does that cause us to start over again and, and kind of, could someone contest that, hey, that, that was an illegitimate document now because that last change wasn't proffered through every channel? No. Now, if you do a trust, you can do, do a simple amendment. We charge like $150 to do an amend a trust. You usually would amend uh, an article of distribution. You have a change in the article of distribution somehow, so you just amend that article and change the distribution. The most common changes are who the trustees are. You want to change in who the mm -hmm. going to be the trustee when you die and what the, what the distribution is, and those are easy changes to make. If you have a will now, it's called a codicil. It's not called an amendment. And you either do a codicil that makes a change in the will, or most of the time we just do a brand new will. The fee's the same, so it's easier just to do a brand new will that spells everything out. And the the uh, amendment or addendum has to be filed with the same person who did the original will, or can that? How no, does it's that not work? filed anywhere really. Okay. It's just kept with the person's uh, uh, other important papers. If you have a safe deposit box, we tell clients you need to keep your originals in a safe place, a safe deposit box, or it's wireproof. Uh, Waterproof, fireproof box at home of some type, some secure place. And now in the virtual world, I imagine there's a cloud-based secure system or something like that? Where yeah, you can but have... you can't keep originals there. Mm -hmm. So the original wills are very important. You have to follow the original with the court. I see. So you have to safeguard, safeguard the originals. So in that process where you make an amendment, that change has to be – it's not it's not immediate. It's only immediate when the actual document in the court yeah. – I see. Well, no, the amendment – you don't have to follow uh, amendments with the court. In fact, wills don't get filed until death. I see. And trusts hopefully never get filed. With the, that's the privacy of a trust is it doesn't get filed. It doesn't become a court record. Okay. Uh, wills, you have to file the original will with the court for it to start the probate process. And if you, you have to follow a will uh, when a person dies, there's a statute in Florida that if you're in possession of someone's will, you have 10 days to file the will. Okay. So there's some, some guidelines and some deadlines that you have to follow that, to make sure that you're not making a mistake. We certainly want to have Joe expand a little bit on that. We're coming into our, our break, Joe. When we come back, I was going to ask you a little bit about the, the – we talked about the family squabbling. What, what kind of settles those or what is the hard document that kind of puts an end to that kind of squabbling? Or how can you remove folks from that kind of thing? Okay. So we'll visit with that a little bit with Attorney Joe Pippen when we come back. Don't forget, we've got a feel-good story for you. Brandon always wants to inject some positivity into your day. We've got folks that feed 15 million people during the pandemic out there on the West Coast. Don't go anywhere. This is the Consumer Quarterback Show. I want to encourage everyone, again, if you hear a property that you're interested in, check us out online. If you want to get in touch with a partner or do business with the folks we do business with, any of our sponsors, ConsumerQB.com is a great resource for all our partners and a great way for you to check out the show and what's going on with the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to come back and visit with more with attorney Joe Pippen. This is Chris Voss, former FBI lead hostage negotiator and owner of the Black Swan Group. And you're listening to Consumer Quarterback Show, hosted by my friend Brandon Ryan. 